Hey guys, Tammy Trier, Mountain Woman Journals. And Austin from Mountain Boy Journals. We are out here today. It is gorgeous. It's snowing and it's just, a, I don't know, I love this time of year. Especially out here. Um, we'll show, turn the camera around and show you. I mean, it's just it's a winter wonderland. But I thought it would be of some importance to show you guys how to milk a goat. Um, useful knowledge um, and that way you know. So uh, we're going to show you that today and show you the goats and I'm going to spin this camera around and show you the scenery and then Austin's going to take over and record for me. So um, hang tight. Okay guys, you can see, I mean it is just, I love it. This is awesome. We just need a little bit more snow so that we can, you're funny, <laughs> so that we can get um, our snowshoes out. But um, I got you. We've got Rosie and Ma. And look at this guy. He's the cutest thing. There's Lucky. We call him Lucky Little Filler. He's the only guy in the bunch. And then we have uh, Mopsy back there. And they're all different. They're all individuals, just like a person. And um, they have unique personalities. And I really enjoy milking them. They're, they're just fun creatures. Um, their milk is amazing. You get sour cream, yogurt, uh, cheese ice cream. We had ice cream for Thanksgiving. So it's just really, really nice to be able to utilize um, and have your own resources. And with the Mountain Boy on a gluten-free and a dairy-free diet, it makes it absolutely awesome to be able to um, make all these things ourselves because he can actually have goat's milk because the milk fat is different in goat's milk than it is in cow's milk. So I'm going to switch the camera over here. We won't keep you on long today. Um, each of these girls are different. I will point that out, but we'll just show you the basics and show you, the, you know, what you need to do, and um, we'll we'll go from there. So, stay tuned. I thought I would real quick show you guys the milking stand that the Mountain Man built. Um, step aside just a second, Austin. We're in a little smaller area here, but it's got a ramp, and he made this out of scrap steel we had sitting around got the legs. Here's the table. We also have a backdrop on there. That way if we have this sitting somewhere that doesn't have any back support, we have something so that they can't walk off one side or the other. Um, some of them have... Mopsy gets a little um, excited when you bring the food in. So, And then here, this actually has a pin to hold it in place. But that slides out to put the goat's neck in there so that, um, and it has various settings because all the goats are different sizes. And then he welded on a loop for the food bowl, which makes it really convenient and easy. They eat, we milk, all is good most of the time. So um, I'm trying to be careful here with the camera, so uh, I'm trying to keep it dry. So I'm going to jump off, get a goat, and Austin's going to film the process here. So hang tight. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to show you, you know, I said each of the goats are different. Rosie's, as you can see, has much longer udders and they're different <laughs> to, she's different to milk um, in the regard that you, I'm going to give her her food. Heads up, girly. Grabbing the bucket. Okay. With hers, you just grab a hold, and I mean, it's not a struggle to get a hold of anything. They're very easy. She's really easy to milk. And then Mopsy is quite difficult to, to milk at times because she's got such tiny teeth, it makes it hard. So it is, you know, it is unique in getting used to your goats, and, and they each, you know, may be different um, to milk. So, you know, don't be discouraged if you have problems from one to the other. Ma can actually be a really hard to milk, too, because... Um, her sacks aren't as soft, so it's harder to grab a hold of. So the other thing you want to do is if you're planning on getting milk goats, you want to get one of those little stress balls. Woo, caught it. She kicks every once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, bear with me here and the photographer. Hey, let me in there. Um, no, no kicking. Because um, it can cramp your hands up. You want to actually get your hands used to squeezing like this because when you're out here, if they've got a lot of milk, it can be difficult to milk them, and your hands will cramp up. But your hands get used to it, and um, it's all good. The other thing I wanted to mention is when you get them down to the end, and that you've got all the milk out, you do want to squeeze their udders all the way down and squeeze as much of the milk out as you can. 
And I'm not going to show you any more out here. We're going to protect the camera and move on. But I will show you what I do with the milk once I get it inside so that you know what to do. And we'll go from there. So thanks for joining us. We'll be right back. Hi guys, I just wanted to let you know, uh, we apologize, one of the videos, of course the one with the most descript portion of how to milk goats is uh, no good and um, we will have to wait, our loner goats um, are gone and our young goats are not ready to milk yet, so we will definitely do another video, but I think you'll get a little bit of something out of this, so hope you enjoy and uh, stay tuned for the uh, uh, how to take care of the milk inside. Okay, we are back. Um, we are inside. I'm going to actually um, put some photos at the end of this, too. Um, it is just gorgeous out here, and um, where we were with the goats, it wasn't as pretty, and I took a couple of photos I want to share with you. It's just a gorgeous place out here. But um, when you come back inside with your milk, the thing is you want to get goat's milk in the f refrigerator or in the freezer immediately. Um, a lot of people think that goat's milk is goaty, it tastes like they smell. And it can if you don't handle it properly. Um, you don't want um, to leave it warm too long. Um, if you put an ice pack in the bottom of your bucket while you're milking, that's even better yet. The colder it gets instantly, the less of that gaminess that you have. It can, it can be present, but um, if you chill it like that, you don't have it. So we don't really mind it because that's how we handle our milk. But you want a piece of cheesecloth. If you're not familiar with cheesecloth, it's just a real fine, almost like a linen material. And um, you can use that to string different things. We use this to make our cheese. Um, so you just use, I actually use my canning um, funnel and put it in a jar and then just stick the uh, cheesecloth in there. The purpose of this is because you get hair once in a while or maybe a piece of alfalfa will fall off from their belly. Um, and it may sound gross to some of you, but I mean, this is, this is awesome. There is no cost in this. Um, the amount of milk we get in the summertime and spring, well, summertime, you get, um, as much as two gallons a day. And then right now they're not milking as much, but, um, it makes it really, really nice to have this milk on hand and to not have to worry about it. So there we go. I almost have two full quarts of milk. Um, on a slow day um, and then I will milk them again in the evening so they get milked twice a day and you don't want to miss their milkings you want to make you know take good care of your goats and like I said it's to me it's a lot of fun they're each unique it's kind of like a dog they're very personable and the milk is just fantastic we had pumpkin ice cream and vanilla ice cream so far and they were out of this world how about it Austin yeah Austin has been on this diet for over 10 years, and this is the first that we've tried goat's milk. And he's been drinking almond and coconut. Uh, we try to stay away from soy because it's not as good for your digestive system. But he, and, and we get him those types of ice cream. And he was just amazed at how good the goat's milk ice cream tasted. So that's a nice treat for him. And I did do a video on making goat's milk cheese, which could not be simpler. So I will put a link in the notes on this video so you can link right up to that video. Um, couldn't be simpler. It's so easy and just a really nice, like I said, treat. We have eggs from our chickens. We have meat rabbits. So when you can be self-sufficient and have your own animals and producing your own um, raw products, it's just it's an amazing feeling. And I wanted to share that. Like I said, these are uh, goats on loan, and they will be heading back home probably next week sometime. So I didn't want to miss the opportunity to share with you on how to milk goats. And uh, we'll continue to share. We've got a lot to share and really want to be able to help whoever we can. So I hope you got something out of this. Thank you for joining both Austin from Mountain Boy Journals and myself, Tammy, from Mountain Woman Journals. And stay tuned. Uh, the Mountain Man and I are doing a merger, and we are... Um, putting all of our materials on treyerwilderness.com so check us out there um, for all of our posts and giveaways and uh, reviews and so forth and also check out our YouTube channel I would so appreciate it if you would go over to youtube.com slash treyerwilderness and subscribe because we are going to start feeding all of our videos at one place uh, this has been a really busy and really crazy year, and I'm trying to 
lighten the load and make life a little easier, but also make it easier for you folks to find us. Uh, we both have various types of education, uh, educational videos, and, and the Mountain Boy does as well. So we will continue to share all of our information um, together. The Mountain Boy will be streaming on our channel um, as well. And uh, check out our store at treyerwilderness.com. Uh, our multi-flame tools, which is a multi-purpose fire piston, is available there, as well as Alaska Guide Creations packs. Burley Bomb, which is a all-natural uh, salve, which is an amazing salve and also useful to carry in your packs. And then we also have all the Mountain Boys products, which are his paracord survival items, from bracelets to gun slings, belts, and he also makes elk hide moccasins. And for you ladies, he just started a pink paracord bracelet line. Uh, he has light pink and, and um, the fluorescent pink, and he's... Mm -hmm. He's a little squeamish on that because pink is not a guide color, but he's had a lot of requests for pink. So if you're looking for pink paracord bracelets for the holidays or for gifts, he's just put them out there uh, yesterday. And the mountain man just made some skinning knives also for you trappers out there that you might want to check out. So thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate you following us and hope that we can share more knowledge and, and are, are helping you in some way. You guys take care and God bless.